In this way, an antibody weapon uniquely tailored to the enemy is produced. To such an extent that an antibody produced for one virus is powerless against another. This sensitive antibody production resembles making keys to match millions of different locks. However, the B cell, invisible to the naked eye, carries out that production with no mistakes. This is an achievement which goes beyond the bounds of human reason. The helper T cell, which disseminate the intelligence about the enemy to all the cells, send another specialist unit into action. Killer T cells. The viruses are neutralized by the antibodies produced. However, invading viruses generally adopt very cunning strategies. Once a virus enters a cell, the antibodies are unable to reach it. Viruses sometimes hide so well inside the cell that neither antibodies nor killer T cells are even aware of their presence. This is because everything looks normal from the outside. Yet despite that, the immune system still senses the presence of something abnormal. In that event, the killer T cells destroy the sickly cell invaded by the virus. Helper T cells are not limited to warning killer T cells. They also call in the macrophages to clean the scene up without delay. There is a great intelligence behind this behavior because the killer T cells first have to distinguish between normal cells and those in which the enemy is concealed. When they find an occupied cell, they destroy it by injecting a chemical substance into it. Once victory over the germs has been achieved, suppressor T cells stop the war. The war may be over, but it will never be forgotten. Some B cells which served during the conflict are given long lives and keep the molecular records of the past invaders. The aim behind this is to accelerate any possible war which might break out in the future. When the same enemy is encountered again, the appropriate weapon to deal with it will be produced in a shorter space of time. Memory cells live longer than other cells. Furthermore, they divide at the end of their lives and the information about a past war is handed on to new memory cells. Thanks to these properties and the information in their memories, they protect the person against disease for years. Thus, a person who catches a disease as a child can never catch it again. The fact is, however, that it is impossible for a cell to set out a long-term strategy and then decide to store information. This is not an ability developed by the cell, of course, but a property given to it by Almighty God. Do not be grieved by what they say. All might belongs to God. He is the all-hearing, the all-knowing. A great war is waged against any germ entering our bodies. The heroes of that war have received no military training. Neither are they possessed of reason.
The heroes of this war are minute cells, millions of which would fit into a single full stop. Moreover, this army does not just fight the war. It also determines its own military strategies and produces its own weapons. If all these processes were under our control rather than that of ourselves, we would never cope with the immense organization involved. For that reason, it is clear that one cannot expect cells or organs to possess such qualities as mutual communication, agreement, planning, and acting with a perfect organization in the light of those plans. Just think, what we are dealing with here is a few organs and a trillion or so cells. It is certain that a human community of a trillion individuals could never perform such a difficult task as mounting a defense without making any mistakes, forgetting anything, and causing chaos. There is one single truth here which must definitely be admitted, and that is that it is Almighty God, Lord of infinite might, knowledge, and reason, who creates cells, as he does everything else in nature, be it great or small. The fact that it is Almighty God who restores people to health is revealed in the Quran by citing the examples of the word of the Prophet Ibrahim. He who gives me food and gives me drink, and when I am ill, it is he who heals me. He who will cause my death, then give me life. He who I sincerely hope will forgive my mistakes on the day of reckoning.